Hi, Norfolk has hundreds of wonderful, beautiful, diverse neighborhoods. This NBN Academy Quick Course is to share some free resources for understanding those neighborhoods better. I'm Jim in my own wonderful neighborhood of Sherwood Forest. If you need help following along with the websites, there's a neighborhood profile guide available on our NBN Academy library page. It may go without saying, but your feet or a car are a great free resource for touring your neighborhood on a spring weekend when neighbors are outside. One of the most helpful programs that the City of Norfolk makes available is a mapping program called Interactive Norfolk. You can access it through the City's website or you can Google it. Once there, I can zoom in to my neighborhood. I'll use the Sherwood Forest Community Center as a reference point. The panel to your left is a layer list. It is all of the different local layers that you can toggle on or toggle off. I may want to see my Civic League boundaries. I may want to know what the school boundaries are. I can find election precincts, wards, super wards. If flooding is an issue in my neighborhood, I can see the stormwater structures. Sometimes neighborhood crime statistics are given out by patrol car district. If that's the case, I could turn that layer on to find out what police car district I'm in and what precinct it is. Or I may want to know how close I am to the nearest fire station. If that's the case, then I could use the measuring tool to simply measure. I'm now going to zoom in a little closer. At the closer layers, you can also turn on the aerial photography. Another subject common in neighborhoods is zoning. If you're not sure what your neighborhood zoning is, you can turn the zoning layer on. If you're not sure what SF6 means, you can click on it, click on more information, and it will take you straight to the zoning ordinance where you can find out more information. The biggest reason that I'm using the Interactive Norfolk today is I want to find out what census track I'm in. In which case, under planning, I can go to the census tracts and turn on the census tracts. The Sherwood Forest Community Center, I can find out, is in Census Tract 61. That's going to be helpful information. Another fun website to use is a national website called policymap.org. It is a subscriber website, but it does have a free public version. I'm going to put in my zip code to jump straight to my neighborhood. If you scroll to the bottom, it too has a number of boundaries that you can turn off and turn on, even down to the block group level. I'm going to turn on my census track level. It literally has hundreds of data points and maps that you can pull from that we're not going to look at today. Right now, I'm just going to look at community development block grant activity locations. These show all of the locations where recipients have received community development block grants. The next website we're going to look at is at data.census.gov. It is not as fun to use, but it is a very powerful tool. I should give you two technical notes. 
First, this is a newer website built for the 2020 census being undertaken right now. It replaces the old American Fact Finder site, so they are still working out bugs, and those of us used to the old site are still getting used to it. It is also built for everyone from the average user like me to data scientists crunching massive amounts of data. Because it is big and complex, if you ever feel like throwing your computer through a window, you're probably not alone, but be patient. The second note is that I'm using a Mac at home because that is where I have the screen recorder. I found that the Census website works better in Chrome than Safari if you're using a Mac. Now onto the good stuff. We're going to go to Advanced Search, and this is why we looked up our census track. We're going to look at geography. We want to look at information at the track level, which is usually closest to a neighborhood level. We want to go to the great state of Virginia, and then the great city of Norfolk. And then this is where our census tract number comes up. I want to go to Census Tract 61 and do a search. What immediately pops up is a summary table. I want to look at a little more detailed information than that, so I'm going to go to Tables, and I'm going to see some very helpful information. I can customize the table. To make it a little easier to see, I'm going to turn off the margin of error back to the table. And from this, I can see all kinds of helpful information about the census tract that is in my neighborhood. I can see the ratio of males to females. I can see that the largest age group in the census tract is between 25 and 54. I can go down, scroll a little further. I can see that the census tract is about 35% white, 51% black. I can find out that there are, let's see, about 6.5% who identify as Hispanic or Latino. And I can find the number of housing units. Now, you will notice up, here, up at the top that it says ACS. That stands for American Community Survey. As you know, the Constitution requires a complete census every 10 years, but in between those years, the Census Bureau does surveys of parts of the population with estimates. So you'll notice in the ACS, it always says estimate. Now, after a half hour and a headache, I discovered that the easiest way to download this information into an Excel file or other spreadsheet is to highlight going to highlight what's on the screen, double click, and copy with headers. From there, I've already got numbers open, uh, I'm doing a new sheet, and if I paste, I can have a copy of that table for myself that I can work with and do charts with. There are other options. You can download from there. You can download from the customized table. But I've found that the least messy way to export it to a spreadsheet is just to copy and paste. We're going to scroll down the left column. You can find all kinds of other information. There should be one coming up about households and families. If you keep loading more, there's economic information. There is commuter information. We're going to look at households and families. I can see that the total number of households in the census tract is 2,773. I can look at kind of the age breakdown. I can look at housing tenure. I can see that in this neighborhood, 55% are owner-occupied and 44% are winter-occupied. So this information becomes very helpful in knowing who's in my neighborhood, how I can better communicate with that neighborhood, and how I should be engaging people in my neighborhood. The next set of free tools that we're going to look at is real estate websites. In a previous video, we looked at the city's own Norfolk Air application. You can look up addresses, or you can use the map, or you can use the filter to pull a bunch of addresses all at once. 
Another alternative is if you just plug in real estate websites in a search engine, it will pull up a bunch of real estate websites. Our local one here for reference is rain.com. It is the local multiple listing service for real estate agents in Hampton Roads. For ethical reasons, we as government employees avoid recommending any particular business over another. I'm only using Zillow for demonstration purposes today, but if you plug in your neighborhood, uh, many of the neighborhoods in Norfolk should be listed. For instance, Sherwood Forest. It will show you what's for sale. I'm going to pick on this house because I walked by it the other day. And since I already have a house, I'm not so much interested in the house. What I am in interested in is the free information that Zillow, in this case, gives me about the market in Sherwood Forest. So if you scroll down, in the right column, it shows you a graph of real estate in the neighborhood for Sherwood Forest. And so it uses as a reference the city of Norfolk as a whole, and then it also shows you Sherwood Forest on the bottom line. The squiggly line here is the house itself. You can see that it was rebuilt in 2017 and jumped in value. But here, what I'm looking at is this trend line that shows you that real estate in Sherwood Forest pretty much trends with the city of Norfolk and is actually getting closer. That's a good sign. If I see the trend line for Sherwood Forest going down, that's not such a good sign. I can also look to see what has been sold in my neighborhood. And then the last website for real estate that we're going to look at is a commercial resource for commercial property, and that's LoopNet. I'm just going to do a search to get to the map. I already happen to know that this property here is the old Kmart site on Military Highway at Norview Avenue. And so it will show me some of the commercial properties that are listed, at least on this website. It will show me the sale price, square footage, but it also, if you scroll down and go to the brochure, it gives me some marketing information on the neighborhood. So it's kind of a cheap man's way to get marketing information. It shows me what the median income is within different mile radiuses, also the daytime population. Those are just free, simple ways to get real estate information in your neighborhood. Public safety is often a big topic that neighborhood leaders are interested in. A good place to look for that is at the city's open data portal at data.norfolk.gov. You'll see this welcome screen. If you go down here, you can see different tiles of different sets of data sets that are available. We're going to look at public safety. The website has its own series of short tutorials that are very helpful. Just briefly, if you look at the right column, the icons give you an indication of what information and how it is presented. For instance, a data set looks like a Rubik's Cube. It gives you all of the information. If it says filter view, it is a summary version that gives you a short view. External link, you might guess, is an external link. Data Lens is another graphic way of presenting information in a summarized version that is helpful if you don't want to sort through the full data set. Map, as you might guess, is somewhat self-explanatory. So there's lots of information that is available. Let's do Police Incident Reports, which is a full data set. When you get to this screen, this screen gives you explanatory notes. The city produces massive amounts of data information, and so understanding it and making sense of it is sometimes confusing. These worksheets and attachments are there to help guide you. We're going to view the data.
it's going to give me a list of incident reports. I don't want to see all of them. I may just want to see Robin Hood Road. So I'm going to do a search, or rather a filter. Let me get rid of the road. And there we go, it gives me all of the incident reports for Robin Hood Road. Going to get back home. There might be other information that you're interested in. The government tile has all kinds of information, or you can just search. One of the popular items that is important to many neighborhood leaders is code enforcement. So let me do a search for code. You can pull up information on code enforcement, parking citations, derelict structures. Now keep in mind, this is during a pandemic and code inspectors haven't worked for three weeks, but normally the information would be up to date. Another important topic is permits. If you're not sure if a contractor is up on his permits, you can check permits. And another big popular question that comes into the call center frequently is mowing schedule. So that is also available online. In a map form. The major public safety website that is most helpful is Crime Mapping. This is actually an external link through an external contractor. It is very helpful. And it's very graphic, so it's somewhat fun to use. It does happen to recognize my neighborhood name, Sherwood Forest, Norfolk, Virginia. I believe it only goes back six months. I'm going to do, I'm going to try a year anyway just to see what it does. And yes, that's only about six months. I can filter for location. If I just want to look at an address or want to do a radius, I can also filter out what I see. If I just wanted to see vehicle thefts or break-ins, I could just filter for that. I can pull up a report. in both list and graph form. We hope that is helpful, and if you're searching for public safety information, this is a great resource. The next tool set is the city's main website. It is like going through an entry door to a vast warehouse of information. The search bar is very helpful for finding information quickly. You can also use the tabs, one of the tools that is helpful to us in neighborhood development is the city's calendar. It helps us plan neighborhood events so that we don't compete with major city events or other events elsewhere. Another helpful link is the My Norfolk app. I already have it pulled up over here. I'm logged in using my personal email. You can create a service request. This is also available as an app, by the way, but you can create a service request. Uh, you can see that my last service request was a bulky item pickup back in November. You can look up information. You can look up other service requests, both of your own and the neighborhood. But for our purposes today, in looking at neighborhood information, you can see other things going on in the neighborhood. 
for instance, if I wanted to know what was going on around the community center, I would type in Sherwood Forest Lane, and Little John Drive, and it would give me service requests in and around that area. So I'm going to look at this one right here at the community center. This one is interesting to me, container on the beach. I didn't know that we had a beach in Sherwood Forest. Evidently somebody miscoded it when they submitted it. But anyway, you can see more details about some of the service requests and what's going on in your neighborhood. Or you can see if something is already, if somebody has already turned something in. I almost forgot that if you want to keep track of what's going on, you can also hit subscribe. And anytime notices are sent about this service request, you'll also receive them. The next website is the city planning website. It is a wealth of information related to neighborhoods. First, there's the agenda and documents for some of the different commissions, including the City Planning Commission and the Architectural Review Board. There are brochures that contain information on various subjects throughout neighborhoods, including fences, zoning, just about anything that has to do with the planning department. At the top, you can see a link to current projects and efforts going on across the city. And more importantly, down here in the document library, oh, this is the online document library. You can find both current and old plans for neighborhoods across the city. This may be helpful. The next website that we're going to look at is the Norfolk Economic Development website. It has its own website at norfolkdevelopment.com. It has information on neighborhood commercial areas and business parks that may be helpful if you're trying to support small or local businesses in your neighborhood. You may want to make them aware of some of the incentive and capital programs. Next, if you just put in major projects in the search bar of the main website, you will come up with a list of all different kinds of activities going on across the city. For instance, if we wanted to find out what's going on with the Tucker Memorial Library on the south side, the project information sheet would come up. Next, if you want to go deeper into utilities projects, the Department of Utilities has its own web page with more details. It has all of the water and sewer projects coming up and also at the bottom has a map to show you where those projects are taking place. Not to be outdone, Public Works has a number of maps and resources available. The construction activity map that I already have pulled up here has or shows permits across the city where there are sidewalk or street closures or anywhere the public right-of-way is affected. For instance, if I look in Sherwood Forest, I can get a general idea of where contractors are working on driveways. You can also see where there's potential closures. Going back to the public work site, there's other maps here. It might be interested or people in your neighborhood might be interested in emergency shelters or snow removal maps. We're going now to the budget office. If you really want to understood or understand, pardon me, how the city works, the city's budget document gives a great overview of the city's operations, both the short version and the full document. Something else that most people don't know is there that could be helpful to your neighborhood research is the Commissioner of Revenue produces a sales and revenue report every year. The most recent looks like this one, but it produces information and sales figures for all the city's commercial corridors. Let's say we wanted to know about the area that Dumars is in, so we're going to skip to 21st Street. Dumars is an iconic business in Norfolk, so we're going to look at that area or not. There it is, 21st Street. Each section has a map, sales figures, a pie chart, and then a breakdown of what's going on in that business corridor. That could be helpful in understanding the business corridors in or around your neighborhood.
Another report that most people don't know is there is the Office of the Real Estate Assessor produces a report every year. It looks a lot like this. It says Office of the Real Estate Assessor and your report. It has a number of maps, information on citywide information, but if you scroll to the end, this is a little tricky. I'll just do it by hand. There we go. If you scroll to the end, it has a list of neighborhoods broken down by division, and you can see how the individual assessments change from year to year in your neighborhood. I'm going to look for Penny's Town is the division that Sherwood Forest is in. I think it is near the end. There we go, Penny's Town for my neighborhood, it grew by 4.26% last year. So those are a very rapid overview of some other city websites available to you for doing neighborhood research. Let's take a minute to look at neighborhood histories. A few links have been added to our NBN library page. The city's website has a page just for neighborhood histories as understood through the city's annexations. The next source is the Sargent Memorial Collection at Slover Library. If you can't go in person, they have a digital collection. I didn't find anything for Sherwood Forest, but if you try an older, bigger neighborhood like Ocean View, you're more likely to find something. Since its beginning in 1935, Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority has played a major role in Norfolk's neighborhoods. In Neighborhoods, under the Redevelopment tab, you'll find project information for specific neighborhoods. It is hard to see, but a 2009 report summarizes all their projects up to that point. Under the About tab is a history of NRHA and a link to their photo archive that you may enjoy. National websites might include the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, or the National Archives. Specific neighborhoods might not turn up in a search at the national level, but there might be something that sparks your curiosity. Finally, Dr. Newby Alexander gave a presentation and shared with us a brochure on the Underground Railroad's activities here in Norfolk, which we've placed a link to on our website. Our second to last stop as we conclude this tour is the communications webpage. If you haven't already signed up for Resident Newsletter, it is a great resource for keeping up on what's going on. In the left column, you'll find a photo gallery that has lots of really good high-resolution pictures from all over the city. You may find your own neighborhood. And finally, and maybe the best, is our own neighborhood development website at norfolk.gov forward slash neighborhoods. On our main page, you can look at the various divisions within neighborhood development, the Norfolk Care Center, neighborhood engagement, neighborhood quality, and you can also find a list of civic associations across the city. Neighborhood Quality has its own page. It has a code enforcement quiz to test your code enforcement knowledge. It has other information and brochures on code enforcement. On the main page, you can take a civic engagement quiz to tell how civically engaged you are, or you can read stories about inspiring neighbors. Our own office is Neighborhood Engagement. We thank you for your interest in Norfolk's neighborhoods. If we can be of further assistance to you, please let us know. Thanks, and have a great day.